clan people. So lately I have been watching a lot of sustainability videos on YouTube and I got curious to see if there's any sustainability videos on houseplants. Today I figured I could do an entire video on that. So I have a bunch of tips that I want to go over today. So instead of making this intro super long, let's just go ahead and get into the video. So first I'm going to discuss some basic sustainability tips that you may already be implementing or using that you didn't know. Or maybe these are some simple ways that you can switch over to a more eco sustainability lifestyle. So the first one is going to be your plastic pots that you receive your plants in. A majority of the time people will go and plant their vegetables in the garden or they get their house plants and they just go ahead and repot them in their own pots and then they throw away that plastic container. I would recommend reusing it if you want to make any starter plants or if you don't have any need for those plastic pots, simply just recycle them. And if you have a certain size or a certain color, I'm pretty sure that both Lowe's and Home Depot have an option where you can drop off your old plastic pots. The next one would be reusing certain food containers or containers that you get in your home. So for example, I love black eyed peas and I get canned black eyed peas all the time. Instead of just recycling that can or tossing it to the side, I could definitely poke some holes in the bottom and reuse it as a planter. The next one is just kind of like a tip when buying houseplant products. So whenever you go to the store, if you're going to be getting like fertilizer or soil or anything else, go ahead and buy it in bigger bulk because in the end you're going to get more product, but it's also going to be less plastic or less packaging of whatever product you got. And my next basic tip would be taking advantage of the humidity in your shower. Instead of having to go buy a humidifier, you can simply just take advantage of that humidity when you shower and keep your plants that love that moisture in the air in your bathroom. And instead of having to go buy products to get rid of pests at the store, so you are having to buy more packaging and more plastic, you probably just have hydrogen peroxide sitting around in your home. It's a great way to remove pests from your houseplants. You can put it in a spray bottle or you can even put it directly in your soil. You do need to dilute it down with water, but there's plenty of videos on that. So you can check that out on YouTube and that's a good natural remedy as well. And then the last basic tip that I have that you may already know is fish fertilizer. So if you have a fish tank or maybe if your friend or families have a fish tank, they more than likely, or at least they should be doing weekly water changes. Instead of just dumping that fish water down the drain, that is great fertilizer for your house plants and your outside plants as well because it has just so much nutrients in there for your plants. It acts as a natural fertilizer so you pretty much don't even have to go to the store to buy fertilizer. Now we'll talk about some more advanced sustainability tips that you may not have known about. Now let's say you do not have a fish tank or you don't know anyone who has a fish tank, more than likely you are a person who eats vegetables, or at least I would hope so. So let's say you have corn or squash, I don't know, just something that you boil in a pot of water. Instead of emptying that boiled water into the sink once you're done, just set that off to the side and that also has lots of nutrients in it that can act as a fertilizer for your plants. So if you don't have access to fish water, just use your vegetable water when you're cooking. Okay, so my next tip is going to be egg water. So you probably boil eggs maybe for breakfast or if you want some deviled eggs. Either way, you might end up boiling eggs at some point within the month. Instead of throwing away that to boiled egg water, set it off to the side and then get your eggs out of the shell like normal and set the shells off to the side. You're going to take those shells that you peeled off of your egg and put it back in that same water and reboil it again for about 10 more minutes just to suck all of that good nutrients out of the shell. 
then you can scoop the shell out and save that once again because we are going to use it again and that water is another really great fertilizer for your plants but with that eggshell you can use that as perlite so if you need a little bit more drainage in your soil just kind of break it up add it to your soil and it still probably has maybe a little bit of nutrients left in it and it will help with more drainage in your soil so if you test for your pH on your house plant and it's too high you can use fireplace ash to lower that pH but if that pH is too low and you need to make it higher you can use banana water so banana water is made by peeling off the skin off the banana and letting it soak in water for about 24 hours and then it is really high in potassium it will make the ph go up a little bit more and it's also a really good fertilizer for blooms so if you have any outside plants like roses or any or petunias or anything any blooming plant uh, banana water is really really good for that all right, and so my last sustainability tip is going to be reusing your soil. So I do not recommend doing this numerous times. I just recommend doing it one time and that's it because if you keep reusing your soil over and over again using this method, then it probably just won't have any nutrients left in it. But what you do is you take your soil and you put it in a pan and make sure that's a little bit damp. Maybe get a spray bottle and spray it down. And you're going to preheat your oven to 200 degrees and put your soil in there for about 30 minutes. However, again, like I said, I would only do this once. Um, once you use that soil again and it's time to repot that plant once more, I would just go ahead and toss it. I would only use this method about one time, but it is a great way to reuse what you already have instead of having to go out and purchase more. So I did come up with a few more tips, but this video is already getting pretty long. So if you want to see a part two to this, just give it a thumbs up or let me know in the comments down below. I hope that you guys liked this video. Hit that subscribe button if you want to, and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye guys. Mm -hmm.